Ross Bowman Podcast. You better ask. Welcome back to the Ross Bolin Podcast, otherwise known as RBP, presented by Bolin Media. I am your host, Ross Bolin, back as always with your co-host, Christopher Coles. Colson, otherwise known as Chris. Chris, how are you? I'm doing great. If you guys would le- ever like to know how the shows start, Ross usually says, I'm going to give uh, give you 10 seconds of silence, uh-huh. and he gives me about six and a half seconds, so I'm never ready. Oh, I'm sorry. So that's how the morning My, starts look, every day. You know how a full second is like the 1,001, 1,002. Okay, I don't know if it's quite, I think it's more like one, 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 uh, one, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, whatever, man. I'm not counting like that. I just go one, two, three, four, five, and then on and on, you know, till 10. I should get you an abacus. It's good stuff. An uh, abacus s- would help everybody. Speaking of good stuff, big moment for the kid, me, on social media, what, yesterday, day before? Yes. Chance the Rapper followed me. He did. How do you feel? He followed me for a very specific reason, though. Do you feel enlightened? I don't know how to feel. You and I talked about this. Chance is like, Chance the Rapper, obviously a very famous rapper, doesn't follow a ton of people. He's not one of these guys who follows like 400,000 people, so it's not cool or whatever. He follows like a couple thousand people. It's cool. It's very cool. I feel cool. So you're in the ratio. I am cool. But, but, I'm not a Chance guy. Yeah. Understandable. I don't like his music. Were you ever a Chance guy? Not like, nah, not really. Okay, so- his shit, Acid Rap, came out, right? Yes. And I was I was into it. I was I was cool with it. I liked the music. Chance was a, a new spin on like yep. sort of that Kanye feel, clearly a protege type of situation. He was kind of the bridge. Acid Rap was kind of the bridge between like old rap and like SoundCloud rappers, I feel like. Yeah, absolutely. And Chance is the guy who, who sh- as he'll put it, showed rappers like getting a big deal is not a big deal, right? That you could do it yourself. Yeah. You didn't need, you had the internet. You didn't need a big record label to get you into the spotlight. If you were good enough and you had the hustle and you knew how to work the internet, you could do it yourself. That yes. was what Chance showed these other musicians. Unfortunately, after the fact, he just started putting out music that I was like, yo, this is, I'm pretty sure this is just for TikTok. Like, you're just trying to get TikTok dances off at this point. It's just not my jam. So I'm always happy to get a follow from like a super famous person or whatever, obviously. But in this case, it was just kind of like, I don't know. And here's, here's why. If, he put out a tweet, okay? He said... Jim Carrey. Okay. That's all it says. And then there's a poll. There's four movies to pick from. The Truman Show. Yep. Eternal Sunshine. All right. Of the Spotless Mind. Sure. Man on the Moon. And The Grinch. These are the four movies Chance the Rapper chose to put in a tweet about Jim Carrey. So I retweeted it. And I said, Chance's choices are trash. It's Ace Ventura, The Mask, Dumb and Dumber, and Liar Liar. Like, those are the quintessential four in a row Jim Carrey hitting the top of the world so that he could do all this other garbage that okay, Chance would, decided was like... I would say Truman Show could fall into your category, but... I, I won't disagree. That, I will even say that Eternal Sunshine could be put in the four if you were a hardcore Eternal Sunshine fan. It's a very good movie. It's also probably the most depressing movie I've ever seen. And and you're talking to a, a guy, dark. you're listening to a guy, Coles, I like dark movies, man. Yeah. I watch a lot of really what most people would consider to be depressing, unwatchable shit. Violent, brutal, horribly upsetting movies. Yeah, absolutely. There's only a few that I'm like, I don't go back unless unless there's something going on that I specifically need to feel extremely unhappy. Yeah. That's one of them. It's like like Requiem for a Dream, Eternal Sunshine, and like... The boy with the striped pajamas. I'm not watching that. I'm not watching the other two unless I really genuinely want to just feel like death. Eternal Sunshine's like your reality check. Like if you're like riding the wave for too long, you're yeah. like, fuck, I need to get myself back to earth. Man. I've got to remind myself that crushing heartbreak is an enormous part of life that can literally destroy you if <laughs> you don't handle corner. it well. Okay, so you retweet chance or you quote tweet chance. Tell him his take is awful. And he follows you from it. I guess he respected the take. I like, guess so, because I've never heard of anything working out like that. That's pretty incredible. But it's like, argue with me, dude. Say something. <laughs> like, we didn't even get a conversation off. He just hit the fu- He was Did like, he yeah. like the tweet? It's like he went, no. It's like he went, yeah, he's right, and hit the follow button and just fucking, <laughs> just fucking walked away. Like, he just realized, he was like, fuck, that was such a trash tweet. I'm just going to follow this guy and leave it there. And so see if that somehow yeah, makes up for it or something. I so hope he never says anything about this again, because this could genuinely end my career worse than it's at now. But, like. For me, what I said when you immediately said it, I was like, damn, that would be so sick if Chance would have followed you like three years ago. You know what I mean? Because for me, at peak chance. At peak, well, 
Well, that, uh, yeah, yeah, you're I mean, right. That was like right. kind of plateaued. But he cut, he hadn't point. shit the bed yet. Let me put yeah, it that way. Yeah, but for me, like, so Acid Rap came out, I think, in like 2011, 2012, somewhere like that, right when I started high school, right? And it was all on SoundCloud at the time. And I specifically remember the first time it was in um, 2013, April yeah, 30th. Yeah, okay, 2013. So that was my freshman year of high school. Um, it I debuted, by the way, at 63 on the Billboard uh, Top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart. Let me just remind you, this was an all SoundCloud mixtape, which so for it to debut like that is absolutely insane. It was just due to bootleg downloads on iTunes and Amazon, not at all affiliated with the artist. Yeah. So the fact that he was able Somebody to get to- Somebody ripped it. It basically means he would have been like number one. Probably. If it had been a, a legitimate mean, release. Yeah. So I remember specifically, it was in uh, sophomore year. I didn't discover it in my freshman year when the album came out. Sophomore year in French class, this girl that I had a massive crush on, her name was Anna. Um, she was a year older than me and she was like, like real, like spiritual hippie woo woo, like kind of edgy that at the time I was like super straight edge little, uh, young life boy. And I was like, that's so hot. Um, and so like, I was always into everything that she was into. Cause she would always show me like what the older, like druggy kids were into. And it's I was like, a bad bitch, you know? and so I remember we were sitting in a uh, French class and she showed me, uh, acid rap for the first time. And I was like. This is why I've never heard anything like this. Like he was different than anything any other rapper was doing at the time. He was like changing the game. It, like it was his, very bold. Yeah, his style of I mean, <laughs> all of his lines from that album are incredible. Coco Butter Kisses to me is still like one of my top five favorite rap songs of all time. Like it, it it's sick to me. It's still dope that he followed you even now. Like that's Chance as a dude, his rise. And unfortunately, his fall is just such a fascinating story. I wouldn't he, even, like, I, let's be fair. Okay. I don't even know if it's a fall yet. Yes. It's just, like, he has clearly... Well, he kind of pivoted, you know? He went from what, I mean, his, his kind of LSD acid trip style, psychedelic, kid yeah, cutty esque Yeah, a guy that's admitted to a lot of drug issues that yep. part of, a, at least part of acid rap was literally... He produced it, wrote it, did some of it on LSD. Yeah. He had, he's spoken to... Um, his Xanax problem from the past, he had a massive problem with Xanax addiction and abuse. He's a guy who's been super open about stuff like that we talk about. Mental yeah. health, drug abuse, addiction, the struggles of life that typically, you know, rap was more of, rap has always been more of like, uh, it glorifies that sure, lifestyle. Sure, sure. Scarface, yeah. you think about it. And then Chance was was a dude, it was, it, you know, it's backpack rap. It's like, it's, it's uh, what do they call that? Like, um, not logic rap. Not woke rap. Oh my God! People screaming at their podcast radios right now. But you know what? I'm whatever the whatever the version of that is that I'm trying to think of. Woke rap. God damn it! I'm, I'm gonna have to. Sure. I'm gonna have to pause and find this. What Hold on, Mariah. Specifically, it's just interesting to me how like exactly what you're saying, and then you know as he gets more and more successful, begins to clean himself up for that longevity in the business. Ideally, you know, people's opinions of his music begin to kind of decline as he becomes more straight edged and less whatever rap type that you're talking about right there it's an interesting commentary to look at you know what i mean how he rises using this kind of you know the the glorification of uh or not even i would say chance wasn't ever fully like glorifying it but just being extremely open with his drug use and everything like that yeah and again, as he begins to kind of clean up, he gets married. He starts like rapping about his wife on Good Day and everything like that. And then that album absolutely bombs. You know, like it's it's interesting. Like the people, obvious, it's pretty obvious what most people want to hear when they're listening to music and especially rap music. Okay, this is weird. Footage emerges of Kanye West shouting at Chance the Rapper during studio session. Apparently, they've been working together on this upcoming. Uh, this oh, it's from a documentary. The Donda album documentary, an upcoming documentary on Kanye West's shelved Donda album. The one that I think eventually, instead of Donda, he ended up doing uh, the the gospel album that he put out, whatever that, 2019, 2020, whenever that was. Uh, but that's the most recent thing, like, Chance is in the headlines for. You know what I'm saying? And then the only thing I see him doing on social media is TikTok-y shit. Well, that's kind of what he does now. Chance is kind of on that same wave as Kanye with that kind of, like, gospel preachy rap style vibe nobody's thing. on the same wave as kanye he I mean, rides his of, own wave they're kind of falling into the same category like it doesn't yeah, he's surprise been, me at all that they're kind of working together on the same project he's been a, he's right been now. a hardcore kanye follower and he really didn't like he you know what like when kanye started speaking on trump and going donald trump and wearing the hat like chance was one of the dudes defending sort of his 
ability to do that, his right to do that. And he's always been in a different vein than, you know, like him, Ye too. Different vein than most of the top, most popular, famous rappers in the world, which makes him a very unique and interesting individual to me and certainly a dude that I would love to talk to if we ever got the opportunity. But a follow that I felt weird about getting because he's not one of my faves. I don't necessarily give a shit about him, but at the same time, huge deal. Just something I wanted to talk about up top at the front of the show really quickly. But we touched on Chance before. We got a lot of respect for him, both of us, just in a place where it's been a minute since he put out music where we were like, oh, wow. stoked. Yeah. He's also getting his titties sued off by his uh, former manager right now. Yeah, I keep reading about that, too. A lot of, lot of drama in his life. Yeah, uh, apparently the, the Good Day album had some issues with its writing and production, and, like, the people on the production team thought that there, there was going to be... They thought it was going to be different than what it was, and then when it came out, they were like, this isn't at all well. what you said. And that's how it goes sometimes. Yeah. Life is hard, which is why our first sponsor of the day is important. RBP 369 is brought to you by Talkspace. This pandemic has really changed everybody's mental health. We've talked about it week after week after week. Some of us are juggling childcare with working full-time in our homes. Some of us are fighting with our partners more than usual. On top of that, many of us are encountering unexpected job changes and challenges. It is a lot to handle, even under normal circumstances, but especially grueling during a pandi t pandemic, of course. All of this leads to a crushing amount of stress, which is why I, for one, am grateful that I have Talkspace and my Talkspace therapist who lets me vent anytime I want. Talkspace therapists give you the support you need to feel your best. Talkspace has thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more. Your therapist can help you set and achieve your goals. I think you'll be amazed by how much progress you make each week if you attend therapy. It's affordable. Talkspace is a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy. Instead of waiting for an appointment, you can send unlimited messages to your therapist 24-7, and they'll engage with you daily, five days a week. They have a network of thousands of licensed therapists with years of experience in over 40 specialties. Again, depression, anxiety, substance abuse, trauma, anger management, relationship issues, food and eating, and so much more. It's secure. Talkspace is secure and private using the latest end-to-end -end bank grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations. My therapist gives me practical guidance that can really, really help y'all. It's changed my life for the better. I'm so glad that I found Talkspace and get the support I need from Talkspace. You can too. Everybody who listens to this show is aware that I utilize therapy, psychiatry, talk therapy as much as I possibly can. I recommend it highly to everybody who listens to this show who struggles with mental health or even just stress, anxiety, and the general stressors of life that, that we all need to deal with. So as a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, you just go to Talkspace.com or download the Talkspace app. Make sure you use the code RBP. You'll get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's RBP and Talkspace.com. Now time for some announcements and shouts. If you'd like to watch our show, not just listen on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can do so on YouTube.com slash Bolin Media. Christopher, wave to the camera. YouTube.com slash Bolin Media. Monday and Wednesday episodes go live on YouTube a couple hours after they drop on Apple Podcasts and Spotify each and every week. YouTube.com slash Bolin Media. If you would like a third episode of this podcast each week, you can get that on Patreon. We do Monday, Wednesday publicly. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Friday, though. Friday episodes are only available in one place, Chris. That's Patreon. P A T R E O N dot com slash Ross Bolin Podcast. Patreon dot com slash Ross Bolin Podcast. Support the show. Join a tier. Get yourself an ad free episode every Friday. I also have one announcement. I forgot mm. to put it in. Uh, I was trying to find it. Sorry. Announce. That's why I didn't uh, wave to the camera right there. I apologize, camera, if you were waiting for me. I know it's been the a long time. The camera day forgives already. you. The camera hard. forgives you. Uh, shouts to Gabriel for your birthday on Wednesday, the 27th. He also wants to tell you, I'm assuming, that Lamar is better than Westside. I don't know if that means anything to you, but... It's a high school that's not better than Westside, but technically it's probably better than Westside. It was one of our rivals. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. Well, shouts to Gabriel. Happy birthday, brother. Lamar was a slightly different mix than my school. Lamar was like the west side of the inside the loop, so there was a lot of really wealthy kids at Lamar, but it was also a public school that had a little bit of the west side shit going on. So, gotcha. very confusing. Mix of, uh, I guess, what what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, tax brackets. Okay, got you. Yeah. Very confusing sure. from Lamar. But, you know, whatever. What I can't even remember what y'all were. Whatever your mascot was, Lamar. Y'all were some weak-ass bitches. What was Westside's mascot? The Wolves. Yeah, because that's intimidating as hell. Unfortunately, I was a wolf. 
for preschool through did you do senior year? Did you have the no? We went straight west side. Oh, you good. know this. Good. Um, preschool through uh, senior year of high school, I was a wolf. A St. Francis Episcopal Day School, we were the wolves. Oh, really? And then, and then in high school, we were the wolves. I never got a mascot change. I just got stuck being a wolf. I went from a tiger to a bronco to a husky. That's tight. See, I just went wolf, wolf, actually, bobcat, which I, frankly was a downgrade. I downgraded severely as I like went up through school. I went from like beast of the jungle as a tiger, and then like I graduated as like a fucking domesticated wolf. I went from a wolf, which <laughs> frankly is dope, and I'm in. I'm in with wolves and Game of Thrones. Yeah. Love it. Well, to a bobcat, which is frankly, I, I, it's a f- wild cat. Bobcats are kind of dope, though. They're okay. Well, I mean, actually, you uh, know, any th- any team named after the bobcats, uh, like all time, suck. There were always stuffed bobcats all over the campus in different places, and it was like oh. you'd see one and just be like, "Well, the fact that it's stuffed makes it all that less yeah. intimidating." Like oh, the fact that you were able to kill this many of them and stuff them and put them all over campus. Also, that doesn't seem like a thing schools normally do. I've never seen a school like stuff and taxidermy their mascots and put them everywhere. Like, yeah, I don't, was, you don't walk around UT and there's just a bunch of like stuffed longhorns. Now, nah, it'd be very strange. That Bobcats be traditionally strange. taxidermied, though, much like uh, some of your household pets that we've spoken on recently. Actually, that was on Patreon, which, by the way, speaking of Patreon, later in this episode, you're going to get a 10 ish minute preview from our most recent Patreon episode, which was utterly hysterical, in my opinion. It's going to be titled Exploding Vagina Candles and Uncontrollable Penises. So you have that segment to look forward to. But until then, it is time now for our first segment. Of today's show. Yo ho, yo ho, we're not as famous as Blappy. But we still get mad booty all the same. And not just the treasure kind, our deep from the depths. Our legends will rise up. We're the baddest pirates you've ever heard. Oh, Damn, that's a, son. That's a banger. It's been a minute. That's a banger. It's been a hot minute. We got a we got a pirate for you today, though. Jean 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 de Clisson. John Jean de Clisson. <laughs> you want the American version or the French version? I really don't know. Can you just switch back and forth, like whenever you feel? All like right, it? y'all. Today we're gonna be talking a little bit about Jean de Clisson. She roamed the seas. <laughs> From 1300 to 1359, otherwise known as Jean de Belleville and the Lioness of Brittany. Brittany. She was a... Okay, I'll talk normal. Jean de Clisson, also known as Jean de Belleville. It's pretty good. You're doing great The Lioness of Brittany was a Breton former noblewoman who became a privateer to avenge her husband after he was executed for treason by the French king. Which is just fucking dope. If I ever get executed for treason, I expect you to avenge my death against the state. I will be your loving wife who hits the open seas and becomes a private. I love how you can just like the look. A privateer is essentially a pirate. Yeah, that's paid by the government. Yeah, and which they is tight. It's like, like a loophole word tight. though. Like it'd be like if um I'm trying to think of like it's uh, like calling mercenaries private contractors. Yeah, 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 stuff like that. Yeah. There's always a loophole word for like you you shouldn't be allowed to do this, but no. somehow it's legal and yeah. under a government contract, and yep. that's what a privateer is. Um, the part that's interesting about her is obviously that she did this after her husband was executed for treason by the French king. So I guess she was just like, you know, it's like for Walter White, he got cancer, he broke bad for her. Her husband was executed. She broke bad, and yeah. she went full pirate. He sold meth. Pretty much the same story. You could say that Jean de Clisson inspired, inspired Breaking Bad. Probably did, in all honesty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else did she do? Oh, she plied the English Channel and targeted French ships, often slaughtering the crew. It was her practice to leave at least one sailor alive to carry her messages to the King of France. Which, savage. I also just like the concept of the King of France, like, you know, sitting in France doing his thing. Yep. And it's like an inglorious bastards when the bastards always leave the one Nazi alive to go back and tell Hitler what happened to the rest of the Nazis. Absolutely. Except that I imagine the French king sitting in his little throne room or whatever and some dude coming in being like, Jean de Clisson, she killed everyone. It is just me. And the French king is like, who? Like, get out. I've got shit to do. Nobody cares about your one fucking ship, Dude, but it this is still is, funny that she left one person alive. This is the 1300s, man. They knew everybody. France was like a kingdom of like 750 people, and like they all hung out on weekends. Yeah, small world, small country. Yeah, exactly. Also, French kings, notorious high heel wearers. 
So he was probably, you know, a good three, four inches above the, everybody else. Just like he thought he was king of the world. She's coming in, just leaving one dude alive on his turf. Yeah. Now he's got problems. That's true. That's true. They dressed like total shit. They he well specifically Some the, of the French kings yeah worst outfits awful least comfortable very very white face with like the red blush all the time why the makeup Don't why know. the crazy makeup and old you know French that kings? you know that makeup yeah. was probably like lead paint like it was you like what couldn't was have been cocaine? good for the face no no Just not constant horrible, breakouts horrible skincare Absolutely didn't have awful. Hawthorne to help them out didn't. I don't know what they did like nobody ever talks about the acne back then but it had to be terrible. Yeah, you watch, like, you know, a period piece like, on the French in the 1300s or whatever. Everybody's just got this perfect skin. That's yeah, not how no, it was. Come on. That's Are you not kidding? how it was. These people were dressed like clowns on a daily basis. That's That that makeup does damage to the pores, and Chris. Imagine the bunions, Ross. In wooden high heels, imagine the bunions. Why? After day one, I get it. Like, he was like, this is a look. And threw on the wooden fucking high heels and was like, ooh, look at me. I'm slightly taller than everyone else yeah. now. After the first day of stomping around in wooden high heels as a man wearing a wig and fucking clown makeup, wouldn't you be like, yo, this is one step too far? It's like me, all right? I am a white dude living in Austin, Texas at 33 years old running a media company with a podcast. Yeah. I know my levels of douche. Yep. I can't go too far. We've talked about this. I can't get sleeve tats. That's true. I already have a Tesla, a podcast. You also can't. Two small toy Australian shepherds. You couldn't add a piercing. It'd be too much. Can't like you do, couldn't do a nose anything piercing. else. No. I'm maxed out on yeah. douchiness. Mm -hmm. the, the French kings, they didn't understand this concept. No, they didn't have the they didn't have they didn't even have the, the meter yet. They no. didn't even know where like honestly. One step too far. If I was back in time, I would want to be a peasant just for the drip and comfort of the style. Yeah, like frankly, I don't want to get dressed up. Uh, peasants have you basically seen? wore like fucking Yeezy season six back they, in the day. You're the tracksuit twenty four seven back in the day. And then if you're honesty. a king, you gotta wear wooden high heels. Fuck and, that. Imagine those fucking neck things. Nobody ever talks about the neck things. Oh, those big. Uh, yeah, the, that go around and it's, it's like, like what it's you got put on feathers. your dog after he gets his junk fixed, exactly so he can't lick that. his where the testicles used to be. You think that's why they did it? They were just licking testicles all the time. I think the French kings had their testicles removed and had to put those collars on because they didn't want to be licking it there where the nuts used to be, and then and then somebody was like, "That looks dope." And then it just became part of the fashion. They ran and again, with it. somebody gave terrible advice there because it looked like shit. I'm just really glad we've graduated out of the like white wig phase. Yeah, and like, who who was it? Like, I want to know. This is this is a task for the RBP gang, the uh -huh. listenership. You find out for me who broke the streak of French kings and just nobility in these European countries in general, dressing like absolute dog shit. I guess the king and queen of king and queen of England. Really went for a long time. They only more recently dressed semi modern. And even now, I mean, they're all right. I mean, that, that, that uh, did you see that picture go viral like two weeks ago of uh, like one of the princes and his wife of England getting carried by like the indigenous people? Um, that's not what you want. No, it was a bad look. It was like a really, really, really How? terrible, terrible look. But anyway. How? Um, what? No. Go, move also, I'd like to say I have a feeling that the fashion was broken by Napoleon Bonaparte and his shortness. Because he was like <sighs> short king. He's like, I don't need high heels. I'm out on that. Like, I'm going to just like literally invade and dominate all of Europe. And then like, I don't need to wear heels or makeup anymore. And that's what he did. The short man. Yeah. Bonaparte was like 5'9", five, 5'7". Five, man, he just like. A and human always, baby, though. He well, did bring out the slippers. Yeah, he did bring out the slippers. He also always a had a giant the, man baby. He always had the hand in his uh in his uh jacket. That was ah a, the, the one icon. hand. Yeah, the one the hand. one hand to let you know, like yeah, he he meant business. Oh, you're right. The hand the hand on the stomach thing. Yeah. Hmm. And then they slap each other with gloves and duel. Yeah. That's French history. Now you're all caught up. Uh, what else? Let's get back to Jean de Clisson. In 1342, the English, after four attempts, captured the city of Vannes. 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 Jean's husband, Olivier, and Herve the Seventh de Lyon, the military commanders defending this city, were captured. Olivier was the one uh, that was released after an exchange for Ralph de Stafford, first Earl of Stafford, a prisoner of the French, and surprisingly, the sum was low that was demanded. This led Olivier to be subsequently suspected of not having defended the city to his fullest and was alleged by Charles de Blais to be a traitor. So basically, they were French citizens, Clisson and her husband. Mm -hmm. They didn't do a very good job of defending the city, according to the king, because after the city was captured, her husband, Olivier, 
was traded back to the French uh, for a very, okay. very low sum of money, which led the king to basically think like, oh, well, if we got him back for so cheap, he probably just gave up the city easy as hell. So they thought he was a traitor. Yes. Essentially, they yes. Uh, took him. He was tried by his peers. And then on August 2nd, 1343, he was executed by beheading, which is... Not the way you want to go. Not a way to get ahead in life, as Especially, Austin Powers would say. It. Apparently, after you get beheaded, like your head, like still has some function for like five or six seconds. Yeah, like, I don't want to be that six second head, man. That's the only part of it that's appealing to me. I'm kind of curious what it would be like to it's just like a, be able to experience life as just a head, just attached for about seven seconds sure. or whatever. Just like get two more blinks in. Yep. Maybe yell out like "suck cock" or like you know. Freedom! Go Braveheart with it, whatever, no, one of the that. two. No, that's, that's you're right, that's, that's whole, overdone. That's super cliche. You don't want your last word to be, to be a Mel Gibson quote no. from a movie that's made up. No, yeah. you probably don't. No, Maybe so you yell suck cocks. Yeah, that's definitely suck yell. cocks, absolutely. Yeah. I would just give him, like, the tongue out, like, in, like, eyes up, like, the demon look, just so that when I die, it... <laughs> <laughs> like that one. <laughs> so when they have to come pick up my head... <laughs> That somebody's like, I'm not picking. Look, somebody's <laughs> got to throw a towel over that before I touch it. I can't. It's it's just looking right at me with its white eyes. I can't do it. I can't fucking do it. So this dude gets beheaded. Jean takes her two young sons, Olivier and Guillaume. You have, dude. These from names are to so not, tough. It's literally spelled G U I L L A U M E. Guillaume. That's, that's a just shit name. Yeah. That's so. She takes the two kids and shows them the head of their father. Which great way to start out life, let me just say. If I just saw the the beheaded head of my father on a pike, it's like, stuck and, on the gate. You're a just pike. Like, oh shit. Just Pops. like Game of Thrones, like episode one, like pilot episode, like I think that was the pilot anyway. There was an episode of Game of Thrones season one where one of the uh, HBO not costume directors, but set people, when they were putting all these fake heads on pikes, they found like a George W. Bush head. Somewhere. No from way. some other set. And they were like, yo, yo, we have to put this. So in one of the scenes, in the OG footage of one of the first episodes of Game of Thrones, there was a George W. Bush head on a pike. This is, got to remember, right after George W. Bush's presidency, uh, the Iraq War, Afghanistan, the whole situation in the Middle East to become very unpopular. Somebody at Game of Thrones decided to make a statement. I'm 99% sure that this is something they actually pulled out. And it no longer is there on the DVD footage. Yep. It's no longer there on the streaming services. They've cut it completely because it was deemed offensive after people recognized that, in fact, one of the former presidents of the United States' pretend head is on a pike. Uh, oh, my God. It's incredible. Yeah, it's dead wow. serious. Yeah, it's fucking wild. Like, it looks, it's actually like his head, but with long hair and yeah, slightly yeah. turned. They were like, okay, it's too obvious. We can't have it facing directly at the camera. Let's turn it like three-fourths of the way sideways. So the side profile, you can't really tell, like, unless you knew what you were looking at. But there's another picture that has, it's, like, another, like, blatant. turned head. And you're like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's That's really, absolutely wild. Really rough. But, so yeah, she, what a badass move from Jean to take her sons to be like, hey, this look, is what. No, honestly. Papa. That's honestly based as hell. She's like, hey, look at what the state did to your dad. Anarchy. Let's fucking go, baby. <laughs> We're running the high seas. Based as fuck. Jean was a, oh my God. So Anarcho. then she's super pissed off. She swears retribution against the fin French king, Philip VI, and Charles de Blais. She <laughs> considers their actions a cowardly murder. Uh, so she sells the Clisson estates, raises a force of loyal men, and starts attacking French forces in Brittany. She attacked a castle at... Tufol near Bones, a castle, many castles, Chris. She attacked castles yeah. this, and garrisons. This chick was seriously the first anime villain. She was just getting and after it. I guess anime protagonist, probably. Jean. Yeah, definitely protagonist. De Clisson. I like to think that she left the last sailor alive with like a kiss just to like confuse him a little bit, you know? Yeah. Get him a little riled up. Like, oh my, God, what the? How did she end up going? Uh, her uh, death date actually has a question mark, so I'm pretty sure she's still alive. Oh, damn, dude. Her fleet was called the Black Fleet. It was. So she got three warships. Um, she had some the help of the English king and some sympathizers that hooked her up with some warships she outfitted. They were painted black. Their sails were dyed red. And the flagship was named My Revenge. I like that. The ships of this Black Fleet then patrolled the English Channel, hunting down French ships, whereupon her force would kill entire crews, leaving only some witnesses to transmit the news to the French king. This earned Jean, the moniker, the lioness of Brittany, continued her piracy in the Channel for 13 years. Most pirates, as we have learned over the course of doing this segment, this recurring segment here on RBP, ba Badass Pirates You Haven't Heard Of, 
They last a couple years. Yeah. Maybe get a couple good seasons of pirating in. 13's a damn long run. That's a lot of anger she had stored up that she released on the open seas for 13 years. She got married four times, by the way. Also, so it's not as if that first guy was just yeah. like... It's not like she was like, okay, well, he all was, right, I'm just going to spend the rest of my life avenging this dude. She was just like, just Nah, he was hunting. number three. She, he, the, her husband oh, that, that died, was number three. He was number three, yeah. So she only got ma- remarried one, more, one time. more time after that. And it was to one of King Edward, King Edward III's military deputies. Which is literally which just seems the strategic. biggest double middle finger to the French king. It's yeah. like, you killed my husband, so now I'm just going to spend 13 years ravaging the oceans right off your coast. Paint my ships black. Name it the Revenge. I've never seen Gone Girl, but I imagine this is the plot or close. It's the exact enough. same plot. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Um, and yeah, so you were like the French king's probably like, ah, I don't care about this chick, but dude, she was like savage to all of her troops. She lived to be fifty nine ish. Fifty nine ish. Died in nineteen. 19- nineteen. I'm sorry. Thirteen twenty nine or thirteen fifty. Oh yeah, thirteen. 1359. 1359. So 1300 to 1359, it looks like. I Wild. just think her, her family crest is sick. I wish we had we still had lions that were bipedal that just walked on their two feet. I've got a family crest. Yeah? Yeah, my grandma has like this. What's on it? Uh, it's a shield of some kind. Sure. I don't know what's on the shield. I okay, need to go okay, look. Okay. But then there was like dual swords going yep. into it, and she had the physical, actual physical version of it like up on a wall in her house we have one on my grant or on my oma's side from germany like her long family line has a has a crest that we have on a couple like beer mugs not a swastika from... is it nope definitely okay, not. that's huge no yeah huge win yeah, really huge win there honestly yeah There's it's nothing, always no... tough german heritage you start to look back and you fa- at your family's You're line just like, and everybody like just every fingers t- crossed yep, man every t- every page you flip it's just like <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of that in the South and the in the U.S. now too, with people going down the old uh, the old rabbit hole, checking their DNA and their family ancestry, and then it turns out they've got like two grand dragons and a fucking, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like nobody, no white people in the South are down to check fucking have 23 seen, and Me anymore right now. Have you seen uh, the interview with Larry David as uh, the interviewer like reads him off his family's heritage? No. They like he's like flipping through a book and he like. He's like, wait, don't tell me that they were slave owners, too. Oh, no. And he, like, flips the page, and it's, like, th- like two white guys standing with, like, 60 slaves behind him. And he's like, <laughs> he just starts, like, breaking out laughing. He's like, shit. That was Larry David's actual family, though, or was it, like, a bit? No, it was, like, a f- like he had, like, family relatives, something like that. There's, like, a, a, a repetitive what? segment. There's a repetitive segment. Oh, this was on Curb. This uh, is on Curb what? Enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He discovers he had slave-owning Confederate ancestors in Alabama. Oh, never mind. Then. Let me make sure this is okay. Kirby and Dizzy, blah, 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 blah. No, okay, never mind. Never mind. This looks like it's real. What the hell? He said he was shocked and completely blown away. It was in the Birmingham area. His great grandfather owned two slaves and fought for the Confederacy. That is so wild. This is on the upcoming season. Finding of your roots. Finding your roots. Yep. All right. So it's like where a... they bring on a celebrity like yep. Scarlett Johansson, P. Diddy, Amy Schumer. Aziz Ansari, Christopher Walken, and they uh, get into their... Oh, 2017 is when Larry came out having discovered this. Man, he just, just got in there. Thank God, yeah. Like, a if that shit later, dropped in 2020, it wouldn't have been so funny. Nah. That's, uh, yeah, nah. You couldn't have gotten the laughing after, snuck is all in I'm there. saying. That's interesting. Anyway, that's your badass pirate you haven't heard of for the day, Larry David. RBP 369 is also brought to you by Black Buffalo. If you're over 21 years old and you dip tobacco pouches or long cut, listen up. You know I left tobacco products in 2020. Huge win. After 16 years, I dipped and smoked forever. It was hell. Hardest thing I've ever had to quit. Bar, bar none, not close. Black Buffalo has everything you love about dipping, including pharmaceutical-grade nicotine just without the actual tobacco leaf or stem, and they were a huge part of getting me to where I am today without tobacco products. It's dip literally made from edible green leaves and a simple list of ingredients with the same taste and texture as traditional tobacco products. There's no compromise on the experience. You can keep your nicotine routine, but clean it up with Black Buffalo, baby. I dipped tobacco forever. It sucked. You can leave it in the dust. Kick it. To the curb with the help of Black Buffalo. I did it. You can too. No more tobacco in 2021. Let's fucking go. Black Buffalo sells exclusively on their website at blackbuffalo.com and is available in both long cut and pouches. Both are awesome. Highly recommend the pouches. Use promo code RBP at checkout for 25% off your first order at blackbuffalo.com. 
Dot com. That's blackbuffalo.com. Code RBP for 25% off your first order. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Next segment. Exploding vagina candles and uncontrollable penises. So as Chris and I alluded to at the top of this episode, we do an episode every Friday on Patreon. We do. It's ad-free, it exclusive, is. premium shit. Available in one place. Patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast. And every Friday, you and I become relatively unhinged compared yes. to our normal show. Well, we've added a little, you know, a little, like I like to say, salt-based seasoning, you know, a little marination to the Patreon episodes. We now sit bit of at home in the Bullying Media office. Yes. In the streaming studio together. Yes. Most of the time robed up. Mm-hmm. Most of the time with a cup of coffee. Very comfortable. Usually Very early on a Friday morning. Mm. And the vibes in there... It kind of takes us into another universe. It is a different different type of show. We we get on a wavelength that is just not possible to achieve in any other setting. And we would just like you guys to join us with that for that. We would. You know? We want you to join us for the next several minutes. Enjoy one of our favorite segments from last Friday's episode. See if it suits you. If you like what you hear, if you say to yourself, "My god, the Monday and Wednesday episodes of the Ross Boland podcast this week were truly phenomenal. I wonder what it would be like if I lived in a world where a third, ad-free, exclusive premium episode was available for my ears and eyes to absorb this upcoming Friday. Wouldn't that be a blessing? And I am here to tell you, friend, you can live that dream by going to patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast and joining one of the tiers to back this show with a minimum pledge of just $5 a month. You can join the RBP gang officially and listen to these ad-free, unhinged, completely ridiculous Friday episodes that Chris and I do. So, here's several minutes from this most recent Friday episode about exploding vagina candles and uncontrollable penises. I hope you enjoy. And then go straight to patreon.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast. As you listen, sign up and make sure you're a part of this Friday's ad-free premium exclusive episode dropping only on patreon.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast. Insane headlines of the day. Uh, <laughs> Go for it <laughs> This is several days old And I've been waiting to talk about it This is one of those things that I was like Old Ross would have talked about this On a Monday or a Wednesday episode New Ross reserves Gwyneth Paltrow Exploding vagina candle talk For Friday Friday fun day Premium ad free Exclusive shit Exclusive shit Shit Shit! If we get back to a thousand patrons, we're gonna buy a soundboard so that I don't have to do that myself. Can I just be the soundboard? You just press, press like your nose. Me. Yeah, and I'll just make sounds. Boop. What noises? What kind of noises you got, Chris? I keep that to a secret. It's paid. You have to. Pay so for you're that not off. Service. You're not off the top like the dude from uh, Police Training or whatever that was. What was the movie back in the day? Bro, you're talking about old movies. Wee, again. Wee. You know, this I is no before idea. my time even. Oh, okay. That's why I can't remember. Police Academy. There was a, a character in Police Academy who just made... He never had a line. Okay. He just made crazy-ass noises. Like, How much he was a he human fucking... Just to make noises. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess, like, 20 grand? Damn. You could I definitely... think it was the 70s? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely my, like, pay ceiling... Or floor. I mean, you pay me 20 grand, I'll make sounds for you all day long. I'm pretty sure this dude just needed weed anyway, just to, like, do the sounds. That sure. was his fuel. Sure. But, uh... Okay, this is the actual headline. Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina candle reportedly exploded, starting an inferno in a woman's living room. Now, look, I'm sure this joke has been made. I'm certain it's been made. But if you buy a vagina-scented candle, you deserve whatever happens to you from that point on with that candle. Whether it is a, that it explodes... How do you scent a candle like a vagina? Okay, so the story that I read originally was that she was testing out uh, candle scents okay. for her new line of candles. For her new line of candles. Or something like that. Or just testing them for I could, like... You want me to read it? Wearing. Yeah, go for I it. I can verify. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't read it. I have not read this but story. Like, Deadass. Based- I've been waiting like the whole week to find out what this situation is with this exploding vagina scented candle. It started out as a joke to where she was like, this candle smells like vagina. And then they were like, fuck it. We're just going to name the candle. This candle smells like vagina. And that's not a thing the reverse way either. No one has ever been like, man, that cock smelled good. I don't think, I mean. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Dudes talk about the taste and smell of vagina. Yes. 
that is not really a thing the other way, I don't think. Maybe taste-wise a little. How often are you talking to people about, like, sucking dicks? No, I know women, man. I've been walking this earth for 33 years. I've spent the majority of that time focused on women. (laughs) And you think that they're telling you the same thing that they're telling their girlfriends about sucking dick? No. I didn't think so. Not all of the time, but... What I'm saying is I've known enough women on a, on a close enough friend level okay. to where I, that they did talk to me like one of their girlfriends or whatever, and that's not really, don't get, me, don't get me wrong, girls are a lot more gross than you would assume, like the shit that they share and talk about and how often they screenshot their fucking text messages and like, that shit's disturbing, like they're, they're but I don't think they talk about, what I'm saying is like the penis doesn't inherently have those traits the well, way I the think vagina does. If you're doing it right, your penis probably shouldn't have a taste. If you're keeping it clean down there, I'm you know. guaranteeing you there's like a Guido dude listening arguing like, nah man, your your penis should taste like strawberries. And that's how he talks for some reason. Okay. That like he has like a sp- Dude, Manscaped, one of our sponsors, they have like a thing that they send with I your mean, package. I mean, they have a body odor, you yeah. Spritz, you can spritz your fucking genital area. You don't want to get it on your penis head, yeah, though. Yeah, exactly. I read the bottle, and it says shake before use, and then it says don't put on tip of penis. How many times do you think they've gotten complaints about somebody that's just been like, dude, I just got this package in, and I like got out of the shower, and uh, my girl was coming over later, so I just like Is really this guy on whippets? it up. Yeah, probably. We were crushing accents today. Would you not be on whippets after? I mean, that's the only reason I could see somebody spraying the head of their penis with a ball deodorant. No, 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 no. You're you're talking about a different product. You're talking about the ball deodorant. That's ball deodorant. I'm talking about the spritzer thing. Oh, so they have a spritzer as well. It's legitimately for like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, what is, well, it's, a, never, it's like I'm a not gonna lie. situation, but like you, you cover the head of your penis. Like I use the Manscaped, but like I've, I've felt a little uncomfortable using like the ball deodorant or any of the other I tried items them. in that package. I tried them. They're, they're, they're legit. I won't lie. Okay. I mean, that's not an everyday thing Wait, so for me. Wait, so how does the ball deodorant it's a special work? Okay, it's like a- Is it like a legit It's deodorant? almost like a little lotion, okay. and you and you rub it across your, your testicle sac. And this spritzer is more like the cologne of the genitalia. So sorry, women. And my parents, who are well, now watching this on their Sunday morning television. Yeah, my mom, too, man. Almost certainly is just, like, disgusted right now. But sometimes that's how it goes. We've got to keep it real. Yeah, I mean, you not, coming here for the genuine genuinity? Not no. to knock the genuinity. Yes. No. no. But yes. <laughs> not to knock the magic hour girls, but, like, we don't keep it real-ish. Like, we keep it all the fucking way 100% real here. 100. H-U-N-N-E-D. Bitch. Speaking okay, of that, we saw a guy swinging this? yesterday. Hold on, should I read the? Oh my god! Wait, let me talk about this pussy yeah, candle okay. first. All right. <laughs> <laughs> From Vanity Fair. From Vanity Fair. Welcome to Patreon. From Vanity Fair. What if this was your first episode ever on Patreon? You'd be loving it right now, obviously. From You'd Vanity like, Fair. Wow, I can't believe this. Is my purchase, my money is just going to the best things of all time. Look can at you this. Met- can you imagine if it was only five dollars, man? Five dollars. This is just right. one of the ones you one get. One Starbucks drink, and this is what you Fucking get. Fucking bonkers! What one a deal! Starbucks what a month. deal! Deal in the best deal in America right now. It should be on the front page of Amazon, and That's none of it should go to Bezos. None of it. Yeah. All right. Not, not a dime. Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina-scented candle wrought havoc on the life of one British woman when her little bit of mood lighting turned into a roaring blaze. Jo- <laughs> Jody Thompson of Kill. <laughs> Kilburn, North London, told The Sun that she won the anatomically inspired home good in an online quiz, but got more than she bargained for when she went to light it. Quote, the candle exploded and emitted huge flames with bits flying everywhere, she said. (laughs) Quote, I've never seen anything like it. The whole thing was ablaze and it was too hot to touch. There was an inferno in the room. End quote. Too hot to touch? Woman, it was a fire. (laughs) The fuck... What did you think? It was going to be a magical pussy fire that you could actually play with or something? Like, what the shit? Of course. The Obvi- whole thing okay. was ablaze, and, Chris, it was too hot to touch. And there were bits flying out of it. But you say that as a joke, but, like, like shrapnel? Let's... Yeah, it sounds like it, man. Pussy you, shrapnel? You say that as a joke, but, like, let's be honest here. If I bought Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina-scented candle and it started, like, exploding and magically spitting bits everywhere, I would think that it's, like, it's time, man. Like, my time has come, magic with a K is coming down upon me, I'm about to, like, transcend Die. dimensions. No, 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 oh, no, no. Oh, no, move no to this the next is my level. time you where, you like, think this is next level for yeah, you? Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. This is, like, the, the goddess of the earth coming down to finally tell me my purpose in life and where I belong. Yeah, that's what's about. Have 
you lit that yet? You never know. That this, might explode. This candle, this, this Tony Soprano candle better not be scented like James Gandolfini's coffin or some shit. Because <laughs> that would be super fucked. Not it's a scented, joke. I'm being serious. It's scented like Tony Soprano's psychologist chair. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We're Back just... to this exploding uh, pussy candle. However, eventually Thompson said she and her partner David Snow, uh, quote, we eventually got it under control and threw it out the front door, end quote. <laughs> the media consultant added, quote, it could have burned the place down. It was scary at the time, but funny looking back that Gwyneth's vagina candle exploded in my living room. And it's quite hilarious. Also, you know they had to sneak in like, could have burned the whole place down because when they're about to sue for all the money that they can get, you know, you got to let them know what could have happened. Has anyone made a fire crotch joke yet? <laughs> I haven't seen any. Oh, I'm it's sure Twitter's fair. gotten there. Surely they have. Be disappointed in Twitter if they haven't. If we make a single joke during this segment that hasn't been made on Twitter, I'd be fucking amazed. Yeah, honestly, same. Seriously. Um, let's see what else. Thompson also shared photos with it with the outlet of the aftermath showing the melted and warped gold label on the black glass container. The fact that that photo wasn't included in this very article that we're looking at tells me perhaps the damage wasn't as dramatic as the story would like us to think. Paltrow's debut $75 candle in her collaboration with Heretic sold out Wait. within a matter of hours last year, prompting her to launch a second Yoni centric scent this summer. This smells like my orgasm is the name of that one. I would like to rewind. Could you repeat the price of said candle? That would be the debut $75 candle in her collaboration with Heretic, which sold out in a matter of hours last year. Okay, now again, so... again, Coles, I would add. They didn't say sold out in a matter of hours selling 10,000 candles. They just said sold out in a matter of hours. Now, Could they made up only candles. 100 candles, maybe, yeah. of her pussy vagina orgasm experience or whatever the fuck. This could have been the only candle, considering that we've only read about one fire burning up and anything like that. There could just be one, this candle smells like my vagina, and one, this candle smells like my orgasm. That's it. I have a question for you. Hit me. If you're in the target aisle sure. and you're picking between two candles, there's okay. only two. One of them is, uh, this smells like my vagina. Okay. And one of them is, this smells like my orgasm. Sure. Which one are you going to take home? I mean, in that case, I guess I have to kind of go with orgasm. Just like positivity-wise, I feel like the energy out of that one is... But then again, that one's probably even more explosive, so I don't know. The org... <laughs> so that was it. That was your teaser. Your little slap and tickle from patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast from our most recent episode this most recent Friday. If you want to listen to that entire episode, Chris, you can do that right now. By going to patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast again, joining a tier, supporting the show, minimum of $5 monthly for an additional episode every Friday, ad free, exclusively in one place, P A T R E O N dot com slash Ross Boland podcast. RBP 369 is also brought to you by Athletic Greens, the most comprehensive daily nutritional beverage I've ever tried. Great stuff with so many stressors in life, it's difficult to maintain effective nutritional habits and give our bodies the nutrients they need to thrive. We've got busy schedules. Poor sleep, exercise, stress, or simply not enough eating of the right foods. This is where Athletic Greens helps Chris and I a lot. Their daily all-in-one superfood powder is your nutritional essential. It's by far the easiest and most delicious nutritional habit that you can add to your health routine today and empower you to take ownership of your health. Chris, one tasty scoop of Athletic Greens contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients, including a multivitamin, multimineral, probiotic, green superfood, and more that all work together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet, increase energy and focus, aid with digestion, and support a healthy immune system, all without the need to take multiple products, which is key. Chris, have you enjoyed your Athletic Greens? I've honestly loved them. I mean, you uh, they taste great. They give you a quick little boost mm. of energy when oh. you drink them down. Yeah. And uh, you want it like gut health wise, you feel great all day. Athletic you know, greens. your trips to the bathroom much easier. Athletic greens. At least personal experience wise. Slash Ross. They're phenomenal though. They really are incredible. Athletic greens has been a big part of Coles and I's Ross Fit routine in 2021. Simply visit athleticgreens.com slash Ross today and join health experts, athletes, and health conscious go getters around the world who make a daily commitment to their health every single day. That's us. Including podcasters like Chris and I. Get a free year supply. What? Of vitamin D and five free travel packs today when you simply visit athleticgreens.com. Athleticgreens.com slash Ross. Free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs today, Chris. Today. Right now? Next segment. 
Grab your light, this is stuff the Wikipedia when you high. All right, Chris. Uh, today we got a global Oreo vaults. Huh. They're, they're vaults for Oreos. Like to keep them? To store them? We're about to find out. Shouts to Nico for the recommendation, by the way. Global Oreo vaults. Never heard of this. Actually couldn't even find the like full-blown Wikipedia page. It's like an off-brand Wikipedia that I ended up on one of these other wikis. Wikishedia or something. The Global Oreo Vault, though, is a secure vault commissioned by Mondelez International on the Norwegian island of Spitsbergen. Nice. In the remote Arctic Svalbard yep. Yep. archipelago. It's beautiful. Words are hard. It is located just under 20 Wait, kilometers archipelago? from... Archipelago? Like of the a two. group of small archipelago. islands? Yeah. Archipelago. Yeah. Sure. Archipelago. Sure. Pretty sure there's a... Vampire Weekend song called Archipelago. Does it act? I'm looking at a picture right now. Is this the actual picture? Does it just have a massive Oreo logo on the I front door? I think that's photoshopped okay. onto the front. Okay, because that would be just absolutely hilarious if It'd you just know. be a basically like a challenge. Like, can you break in and get all the Oreos? And like that's the thing. That's the, the so the it begs the question. You know, humanity in two thousand years. Yeah. When we're all gone, how are they going to be able to access this Oreo vault? So the whole this whole vault thing, sure. Chris, you brought up the, the off mic. There's like there's seed vaults, right? Yes. Um, one of these is the Svalbard Global Seed Vault, which it says is only like thirty miles from this bad boy, twenty kilometers from the Oreo Vault, okay. and that's what inspired the Oreo Vault. So somebody did like a legitimate vault for seeds, you know, because yeah. if the Earth is threatened by a potential asteroid impact, which is actually what the Oreo Vault is in response to, it was a purported minimal threat of the potential asteroid impact of 2018's VP1, a yep. near-Earth asteroid which was projected to have a 0.41% chance of hitting Earth's atmosphere on November 2nd, 2020. Glad we which, made it through that. Yeah, frankly, Didn't was unaware. 0.41% seems a little too high for my liking in terms did, of like the potential ending of the Earth. Well, did you know that we pass through a meteor belt twice a year, once in July and once in November? I actually did know this. The Torrid meteor belt, and like every single year there's like, you know, enough of a chance that we could get hit by a massive meteor to like at least cause a bit of concern. I'm going to be frank, most of the ways the world could end sound truly terrible, yeah. like uh, nuclear war, yep. famine, mm -hmm. like crazy fucking, I don't know. I'm sort of down and interested to see what happens when like an asteroid hits. I'm like, down with asteroid. Do I'm down with nuclear war too. As long as I'm in, like either I want to either die instantly or be outside of the radiation zone and have to live like apocalypse lifestyle. Oh, bro. What I don't want is to be like a hundred miles away from the blast and get like cancer in a primitive society. You get turned in, like, into one of years. the uh, like the glowing from dudes like Fallout. Yeah. From Fallout. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to be that either. Yeah, you don't want to be one of those. I or, killed lots again, of those dudes. If it's gonna be an asteroid, let me just go quick. You know, hit the Earth. Somebody get the cl the clip of just Chris. Just the only piece that it says is, "I'm down with nuclear war." <laughs> I want that clip. Um, Comrade the, Cole. <laughs> the vault is intended, according to the Oreo brand, to, quote, protect the Oreo recipe in a large stockpile of cookies. Construction of the vault was completed on October 22nd, 2020, just last year. Yep. The project has been widely described as a publicity stunt, with official media and information releases concerning the project often being presented in a satirical, humorous way. Boxes of Oreo cookies within the vault are stored in Mylar bags, which can withstand temperatures ranging from minus 80 degrees to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and are impervious to outside chemical reactions, moisture, and air. What's the point of the vault if you just have these bags? Like... Uh, that's a good question. Did you need the vault if the bags themselves are this good at preserving the Oreos? Does beg the question. And Who also, runs the vault? That's Is it the cockroaches? Like and are, also, like, are they going to have to send a family to this vault when everything, like a male and a female to like repopulate the Oreo vault? Are they only going to live on Oreos? And aren't we just proving that Oreos aren't the perfect food like Bill Simmons believes soups, soup to be? Um, because like, for example, the Twinkie, Chris, mm -hmm. everybody knows the Twinkie would survive it already. Need no vault. No, it exactly. just survives. Yes. The Twinkie is the cockroach of foods. Yes. What's what gives Oreo? Yeah, I, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. And again, I'd like to go back to the, to the like, if humanity in 2,000 years finds this vault, what the hell are they going to do with it? They're, yeah. We're not going to be able to bless them 
with the deliciousness of an Oreo yeah. cookie. Because here's what's going to happen. They're going to break into the fucking seed vault yep. down the street, and yep. they're going to be like, oh my god, this is huge. We can repopulate the earth with plants. Look, another vault. Let's see what's in that one. It's got to be like crazy shit, like probably a spaceship. Maybe, maybe it's alien life, weapons, or maybe it's like, tools. maybe it's the only humans that are left that yeah. survived, and we're going to yeah. let them out and start a whole new civilization. And then they open it, and it's like little hockey 72 pucks. boxes of Oreo cookies. To, that to them look like little circles of rock. In bags, which frankly provide very to little to no tr nutritional value. Exactly. Drink also, your athletic greens because Oreos aren't going to get it done. I uh, tweeted on the RBP account and posted an Instagram this morning saying a, a sip from an original Four loco would kill a pilgrim. Yeah. What do you think a taste from an Oreo cookie would do to like a primitive primitive human? Like what would that, like uh, just imagine, you know, you no any, processed food in your entire life. Do you have any life. friends yet that are like complete and total health freaks? Not on the level that you're talking Actually, Okay, I've so won like when you get a little older into your into your late 20s, early 30s, you'll yeah. have friends who go like, oh my God, they, it's basically like a fear of death develops. You're like, sure. oh shit, I'm not 20 anymore. I could die. Everything I put into my body is like Yeah, this actually matters effects. now. So yeah, you'll have yeah. people go like full blown, like it ain't even like vegan. It's like they eat the grass in their front yard and in their backyard for dinner and then that's it. And like, they like grow grass like on their uh, window shows. seals. When and you stuff give like one that. of these people. Yeah. An Oreo or like anything not healthy. Yeah. They get like a headache and throw up on you like exorcist style. So if you gave these humans in 2000 years that we are theorizing will probably be uh, like perfect alien beings. Sure. It'd probably kill them. Yeah, probably would. So, t I mean, it could almost be like each Oreo is its own little nuke yeah. that kills a so person. Basically, Oreo is just uh, confirming the extinction of humanity. Yeah, just down the over line. Time, down I want to read a little bit of this from Food and Wine. Since 2008, <laughs> the Svalbard, oh, this is the only time I'll ever read you food and wine. <laughs> the Svalbard Global Seed Vault in Norway has served as one of the last lines of defense against the annihilation, annihilation excuse me, of planet, <laughs> of plant life on Earth. The annihilation. The secure facility built into the side of a mountain holds over one million seed samples, offering hope that if all other existence of a crop is wiped out, a final backup will still be available. This is great if you want fruits and vegetables or whatever, but what if you want cookies? With that in mind, Oreo grabbed some land right down the road and built its own global Oreo vault. Bring on the apocalypse. The cookie brand says the Oreo-focused facility holds just the Oreo recipe and a large stockpile of cookies, but if all hell broke loose on our planet, know that you'll always find the, you'll always find the world's best-selling cookies at the coordinates 7808, 58.1 north, 16 degrees, 01, 59.7 east. I don't know how to read that, uh, but you can look up the coordinates if you're looking to travel to the Oreo vault. There is allegedly no milk. Doesn't in the, the vault. seed vault kind of rely on the idea that like we're still able to like use transportation? Because you can't plant seeds in Nor or wherever this is in the Arctic Circle. I'm know? gonna assume they got that figured out in some there, way. There shape must or form. be a reason, yeah, because because you're gonna have to get to the seed vault and travel your ass to like fertile land yeah. too. And the way I figure it, they probably thought like, look. You think if we're in the position like, where we need the seed yeah. vault, who knows where the fertile land even sure. is? Let's just make sure the vault is as safe as possible. Oh, so they got like indoor grow house stuff going on down there. I also need to know, do they have a weed plant? Because there has to be at least one. Like you're telling, like they have to have at least one. See, I don't even worry about the weed plants because like stoners are on that. There's like millions of stoners who are like got their own little seed vault going somewhere. You There's know? like a classified drug vault that's like right around the corner of the Oreo vault. And that's you know that the, exists though, the right? Oreo like vault. You, but you know what you just spoke to, like that is a thing that exists somewhere. Oh yeah. There no, has to be definitely. a room yeah. that some scientists yep. are in charge of stock that's literally just for studying all the most illicit drugs in the world. They've like, got like a sample of weed from like the seventies, eighties, nineties, two thousands, and then the glowing fucking purple green shit we smoke now that's literally giving off like Radioactive uh, Oreo vibes. Oh, I don't radioactive know. Oreos. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, there's a vault that exists with a shit ton of Oreos in it, which is huge for us. And that's where we're headed to right after this show. We'll meet you guys there. I cannot believe... We First, we storm Area 51, then we storm the Oreo seed vault. The, the Oreo cookie vault. The precautions they took... Is it armed? Like, do they have armed guards there? They definitely have armed I'm guards. I'm imagining it's a turret system. Like, if you oh, okay. break in, the turret just opens fire on you. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. it's right inside the front door. You it's open like, it. You're like, we did it. We're in the... And you're just blown away like Denzel at the end of training day. Nobody can have my Oreos. Yeah. King one. Kong ain't got shit on me. I heard that's why uh, King Kong and Godzilla are fighting for possession of the Oreo vault. We're doing another King Kong, aren't we? Yeah. Another King Godzilla. Kong Godzilla. It's going to be a King Kong vs. Godzilla. I saw somebody was like, I'm only in for this if Godzilla does his old school finishing move, and it's the one where he literally flips upright, his feet 
shoot towards the other person and it's drop, lots of little like kicks. A drop kick? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a good one. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'm on I'm physically I'm, silly looking though. I'm fully team Godzilla. I cannot support King Kong as he is a simp and I'm anti simp. Yeah, you don't like the simping. No. Simping. It's not easy. Somebody's got to do it. That will do it for today's show. But before you head out to take on the world, this time comes some very important announcements. First of all, you've been saddled with three legal obligations as a result of having listened to this entire podcast. The first of which is you must rate and review. Give us five stars. Write two or three sentences about why you love the show, and that'll do. You can move on to number two, which is to share the show with one person, a family friend, a co-worker, a neighbor, any one individual that you think would enjoy the Ross Boland podcast, share the show with them this week, and you have accomplished your second legal obligation, which takes you to your third and final to support our sponsors who support us and keep us in business, Talkspace.com, code RBP, get you some therapy, BlackBuffalo.com, code RBP, get you some pouches or some long cut, this product contains nicotine, nicotine is an addictive chemical, obviously, Athletic Greens, Go to athleticgreens.com slash Ross. Get your health routine for 2021 stepped all the fucking way up. And that's it. Those are your three legal obligations. You uh, do all three. You can check all three boxes. I can call off the dogs. We don't have to see each other in court. and We can all live long and prosper. We are on social media. Instagram, at the Ross Boland Podcast. Twitter, at Ross Boland Pod. Facebook.com slash Ross Boland Podcast. I am Ross Bolin, and you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at W-R-B-O-L-E-N, at W-R Bolin on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. You can also catch uh, Chris and I live a couple few times a week on Twitch by going to twitch.tv slash boss Roland. Twitch.tv slash B-O-S-S-R-O-L-E-N. Christopher, where can everybody follow you on social media? You can find me on Instagram at ChrisSC99. You can find me on Twitter at Q0ULS, and you can find me on Snapchat at Chris underscore Coulson. That's C-O-U-L-S-O-N. Huzzah. Follow and check out Bolin Media's television and film podcast, Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, available wherever you listen to the Ross Bolin Podcast. If you love TV and movies, if you're a big TV and film, Hollywood pop culture news buff, OCC is the show for you. Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, formerly the number one Game of Thrones podcast in the world, my, uh... Dear friend Mr. Barrett Dudley and I have been hosting this show for a few years now. We have moved on from Game of Thrones, obviously, as that show ended, to doing general television and film, all the different TV and film things that we watch. We're having a blast. We love it. Come join the Clam Fam and listen to Oysters, Clams, and Cockles wherever you listen to the Ross Bolin Podcast. That will do it for RBP 369, produced by Mariah Gossett and Mike Moody Garcia of Permanent Record Studios in Austin, Texas. Chris and I will be back Monday. For episode 370 right here on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube.com slash Bolin Media. But first, as we've said repeatedly during this show, new episode dropping Friday on Patreon.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast. Another ad-free premium edition of RBP right there on P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Ross Bolin Podcast. Get in there. 369. Damn she fine. Booyashaka. Kuyashaka. One more time. Get low. 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 Get low from the window. To the wall, till sweat drop down my balls. All these bitches crawl. All oh, skeet skeet, motherfucker. All oh, skeet skeet, goddamn. Peace be with you. And also with you.